Hello and welcome everyone. Today I am going to show you how to build a Contoso University Sample Web App, which is a website for a fictional Contoso University. And this will demonstrate the Razor pages with Entity Framework Core in ASP.NET Core. And this is a part one of a series of eight tutorial. Uh, now, as usual, the prerequisites are ASP.NET and Web Development Workload within Visual Studio 2017 version 15.7.3 or later and .NET Core 2.1 SDK or later. So the app looks something like this. This page. So this is the index view, the search box, find by name. This is the ultimate stuff. And this is the student, last name, first name, enrollment date, and the edit view, right? So click on file, new project. ASP.NET Core Web Application and I will name it Contoso University. And click on OK with the default web application template. All right, so now this is the overview of the Contoso University. This is the project. What I will do first is uh, let us inspect this a bit, pages and the shared folder and layout.cshtml. And I will get rid of Contoso underscore university to make it Contoso space university. And then Contoso University title is all right, Contoso Space University. And I'll have to put some navigation menu for students, courses, instructors, and departments. So I'll have to get rid of this contact. Control X and then copy one of them. And make it student, students, front slash index. And the title is students. And I will copy it. Control C, Control V. Again, copy it, copy it, and edit it so it becomes courses, and this also becomes courses. Instructors. becomes instructors again within the start and end anchor tag and then finally departments so 
So I'll just copy the departments and then paste it over there. Right. Everything else remains the same. And then I'll jump over from this layout to pages index.cshtml and I have prior copied from in my notepad and control A to highlight everything and control V to copy it over with the code that I have got on my clipboard. Then the next part is creating the data model. Now the data model we have got a course and an enrollment and a student table and uh, we have got course ID as a primary key and title and credits for the course and enrollment ID as a primary key for the enrollment table with course ID student ID as the foreign key from the course and student table and the grade as another field and in the student table we have got the student ID as a primary key with the last name first name uh, first mid name and the enrollment date so we will do that one by one so in the student how to create the student entity so we'll have to create a models folder within the Contoso University project so click on add new folder models within this models folder I'll add classes relevant classes add class student I'll, I've copied it previously on my clipboard and highlight everything and paste from the copied code so don't worry about this enrollment class is to be code it so it's coming up with the it could not be found so we'll soon find it out now here the ID property becomes the primary key column of the database table that corresponds to this class that is the student table by default entity framework core interprets a property that's named ID or class name ID such as student ID as the primary key in class name ID class name is the name of the class the alternative automatically recognized primary key is student ID it could be as well student ID the enrollments property is a navigation property navigation properties link to other entities that are related to this entity that is the student entity in this case the enrollments property of a student entity holds all of the enrollment entities that are related to that student for example if a student row in the database has two related enrollment rows the enrollments navigation property contains those two enrollment entities a related enrollment row is a row that contains the student's primary key value in the student ID column we'll see that soon when you make the enrollment table for example, suppose the student with ID equals one has two rows in the enrollment table. The enrollment table has two rows with student ID one. So student ID is a foreign key in the enrollment table that specifies the student in the student table. So now we'll create the enrollment entity. So one way to do is to look for potential fixes and generate class enrollment in a new file. It will automatically create the enrollment.cs for me the default enrollment and I have copied as usual the code from the documentation original documentation by Microsoft and copy it over highlight this and control V to paste it so this one is now course it's looking for the course so I have to create that course class eventually now before that you can see here the enrollment ID property is the primary key once again this entity uses this class name class was enrollment and ID class name ID pattern instead of the ID unlike the student entity the developers choose one of the patterns and use it throughout the data model so in a later tutorial using ID without the class name 
is shown to make it easier to implement inheritance in the data model. Now the great property here, it's an enum. The question mark after the great here, great type declaration indicates that the great property is nullable. A grade that's null is different from a zero grade. It's not known. In fact, is not known or hasn't been assigned as yet. The student ID property is a foreign key and so is the course ID is a foreign key. And the corresponding navigation properties are the course and the students. The student entity differs from student.enrollments navigation property here. And uh, uh, which contains the multiple enrollment entities like we have seen here. The course ID property is a foreign key and the corresponding navigation property is course and enrollment entities associated with one course entity. So one is too many relationship between um, course and student and the enrollment table. Uh, so we will now finally do the create the course entity. So show potential fixes, generate class course in new file and my course.cs file is ready. I will have copied from the my clipboard and paste it here to create the course class. Now here the enrollments property is a navigation property. A course entity can be related to any number of enrollments. That's why it's a collection. Now next is to scaffold the student model. So in this section the student model is scaffolded. What is scaffolding? The scaffolding tool produces pages for CRUD operation for the student model. Now I'll build the project first. Control shift B is the hotkey combination for building and it's ready and then I'll have to create now within the pages directory a students directory or new folder or directory which is now renamed as students. And then what I'll do is right click it and add new scaffolded item. Go select this one, add this uh, window opens and then the model class is student contoso university dot models and in this data context class I have got this contoso university dot models dot contoso university contoso university context instead I will make it school context contoso university dot models dot school context just to be on the same page with the documentation as I have copied the code from the documentation. So Contoso University dot models dot school context and click on add. Click on add again. Now, okay, so we have got within the students folder, we have got create view and create.cshtml.cs. Similarly, we have got delete, details, edit and index views with their corresponding c -sharp files. And also we have got a data folder made for us and which has got a school context.cs class. So just for the sake of convenience, I will close all the document, uh, right? And then we have to do some updates for the startup.cs file. And now 
here app setting that this json file is the configuration file which has already created the connection string so this will be just like a web config file the application config file and then we'll have to make the start changes in the startup.cs file now startup.cso the changes are already made uh, now this asp.net core is built with the dependency injection services uh, services are registered with dependency injection during application startup components that require these services such as the rager pages are provided these services via constructor parameters the constructor code that gets a db context instance is shown later in the tutorial now here if we examine the uh, this configure services method this method within the startup file we'll find this one this highlighted code it gets the connection string school context now the name of the connection string is passed into the context by calling a method on the db context uh, db context options object now for local development the asp.net core configuration system reads the connection string from this app settings.json file okay now i'll have to update the main method so where is my main method that is in the program.cs file and uh, as earlier you know, I have just copied the code from the documentation and <coughs> highlight it and paste it okay right now here something is to be seen this ensure created method this ensures that the database for context exist so con context.database.ensure created ensure that the database for the context exists if you could read on my mouse over if it exists no action is taken if it doesn't exist then the database and all its schema are created if the database exists then no effort is made to ensure it is compatible with the model for this context right there are quite a few things over there now ensure created is called on the app start which allows the workflow as uh, delete the db and change the db schema for example i will just show you by changing the db schema by adding uh, email address field on my student model and then regenerate the schema and re-scaffold also and then run the app so ensure created will create a db with email address okay so why start up okay all right so i'll test the app control f5 you run it through control f5 it's loading I'll select the students link create new John Newcom put on the enrollment date so this is the date field I will use this up and down bar up and down arrow to automatically fill it for me and then year by default is 2018 so I can bring it down 2017-16 anything and then go to the next one this is time one o'clock and then this is am or pm just give it an am and create so my in first record is created so i can just uh, this edit it with john 
um, say whatever Jack Newcomb and save it right and then details yep last name first mid name enrollment date back to list and then also delete it you can delete it okay and delete it so now what I promised earlier that you know if I that ensure created method if you come back to that uh, this ensure created method what this does it actually supports a workflow which is if I delete the database so let's uh, see where is the database this I can see the school contact database name is this 01 f56 so SQL Server Object Explorer Uh, SQL Server, MS SQL Local DB, Databases. Uh, this one is the one. Now, here, supposing I delete this database. I delete this database okay close existing connections okay uh, yeah it is deleted now if I make some change in the student class the student model put some field like email address Again, if this is a string, email address. And leave everything unchanged. Let's see, because I have already kept it as school context and the startup.cs school context. But before that, I'm reminded of one thing. I need to delete and re-scaffold the all the create edit index delete uh, files so that it gets to the new model thing I'll just delete them delete it permanently okay once it is deleted I'll just re-scaffold so again Uh, so okay let's see school context yeah so it's I think created everything create delete details edit and index right that's great and let's run the app Control F5. Students. There you are. You've got the email address field. You can create a new one and it will show it on the form. Email address. So, wow. So, ensure created has worked. Now, what we will do is update the school context.cs uh, with the copied code on my clipboard which I will just paste right now this highlighted code here it creates a db set of uh, type t entity property for each entity set in ef core terminology an entity set typically corresponds to a db table an entity corresponds to a row in the table. Now DB set enrollment and DB set course could be omitted. Entity framework core includes them implicitly because the student entity references the enrollment entity and the enrollment entity refers the course entity. 
For this tutorial, keep DB enrollment and DB set course in the school context. Now, we will next create a new class file named DB initializer and in the data folder. So, I'll create, right click the data, add class and name this class DB initializer. and copy it over, highlight it, copy it over with the uh, code that I have already have on my clipboard. Right, and this is the data voice initialize class. Okay, and the last thing I need to do is to modify the program.cs. The main method I'll have to put an extra code in the try block and this is this one using Qantas University dot data so database initializer dot initialize and passing the context object okay right now I'll run the application So build succeeded and control plus F5 will give me a start, start up the application without further debugging it and click on students. Yep, so it's done. This database is initialized. Now if you have a, if you close this window and have a look at the database, it will tell, give me all the results so view not the code sorry um, view data view data so it has got all the records from one to eight that has been you know initialized through this db initializer class so that's great that's it Thank you very much for watching. If you like the tutorial, please put your likes and comments and subscribe to the channel.